Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's Tips and Tricks Thursday. All right, folks, in this Tips and Tricks episode, we're going to go over one of the favorite pastimes of anglers throughout the southeastern Florida coastline. It's great fun, it's action-packed, and it can really get you into the bite enticing that impulse to feed from many different species of fish. That's right, we're going to go over how to rig up and get ready to go out and do high-speed vertical jigging. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. All right, folks, so to start out with, again, we are talking about high-speed vertical jigging, also known as vertical jigging, also known as speed jigging or butterfly jigging. This is not slow pitch jigging. It is an entirely different animal. Vertical jigging on paper is defined as a fish trying to escape fleeing up towards the surface. Slow pitch jigging on paper is defined as a fish trying to escape the bottom that is injured. So that being said, let's get into a little bit of the specifics about rigging up. One of the first and most imperative things that you need to be able to do vertical jigging properly is a pair of split ring pliers. It's called split ring because it's got this little tooth up here. And what that does is that help you open up little split rings that are at the ends of all of your jigs so that you can attach them to your assist hooks. You're gonna to wanna to get comfortable and become proficient at using split ring pliers. That way you're not spending the whole day rigging and changing out lures and trying to figure this process out. All right, folks, so the first thing I wanna to explain to you is that typically when you buy your vertical jigs from a store, they come like this with assist hooks already on them. You are going to want to remove them with your split ring pliers leave them just like this with just the split ring dangling up at whatever you prefer the top to be. So when you're going to rig up, you're going to want just assist hooks attached to your leader at the end of your line. Hook it right to the solid ring of your assist hooks. This is how you do vertical jigging. Do not confuse it with the way you set up for slow pitch jigging, which is where you just have a solid ring at the end of your leader. So here's the difference in why you want to use the solid ring on slow pitch jigging and the assist hook on the end of the leader for vertical jigging. Slow pitch jigging is always pitching and falling and fluttering down. That ring to split ring to solid ring on your hooks gives it a little bit more freedom to flutter down. When you're vertical jigging, your line's always taut and you're consistently pulling up on a rhythmic pattern to retrieve the jig from the seabed floor. Now what happens is fish is going to come and strike it. They're not necessarily looking for an easy target, which you are presenting. They're looking for an injured prey fish and you are enticing the impulse to feed so that they can come and sort of do a sneak attack. What happens is, is you are consistently pulling on the hooks rather than on the jig itself and the jig is reacting around the hook. And as you're pulling up, the fish comes and strikes it and he hits the hooks and then the shock absorbency from your baseline knot and your monofilament leader gets it so that you can set the hooks as the fish is running down and then you can retrieve it. Now another important aspect when it comes to rigging up for vertical jigging is you need braid. You need braid to do jigging. Braid does not stretch and retract. Monofilament stretches and retracts. So your jig under the weight and the pressure of water will just basically not act like a jig and you're only just going to basically pull it up straight if you have monofilament spooled onto your reel. You need braid to make a jig react properly. All right, so this is my vertical jigging setup. Most people like to use beefy reels and a little bit heavier gear. I like to be able to go out and jig for a long period of time. So I tend to tone it down and use lighter gear. What this is, is this is a Penn Battle 5000. And it's on a seven foot Penn Battalion rod rated for 20 to 30 pound braid class, which is what I have on it. Now, this is also a jigging rod. What that means by it being a jigging rod is it has a weight class 
for what jig you're going to be using. So this rod is rated for jigs between 100 and 300 grams. It's a great rod for vertical jigging. It takes on bonita, it takes on tuna, it takes on kingfish, it takes on even hefty amberjack. I've used it for many years for vertical jigging. It takes a licking and it keeps on ticking. So this setup, what it is, is it's the Penn Battle 5000. It's spooled with a top shot of 300 yards of 30 pound braid. Super tough line, it's not gonna break. Braid will not break unless it is somehow compromised. So you can even go lighter down to 20 or 10 if you want to, you're perfectly fine. Now that is on top of my underlying line, which is 12 pound monofilament, about 200 yards of it to fill up my spool. Now let's talk about the leader. You don't need a hundred feet of leader because let's say you're jigging in a hundred feet of water. You don't want to use a hundred foot leader. You'll never get out to your braid and you'll never be able to jig properly. You can do vertical jigging effectively with about 20 to 25 feet of monofilament leader. What my leader is, is it's 40 pound monofilament. It's not fluorocarbon. I use monofilament because it has a little bit more stretch to it and takes out some of that shock absorbency from when the fish hits and it helps set the hook, which is what that stretch in monofilament does for you. As I said before, your jigs are gonna come like this from the manufacturer, most of them with the assist hooks on. You're gonna wanna remove them. So you'll end up with this, which is just your lure with your split ring. And then what you're gonna do is you'll take your hooks that you've removed from whatever lures you have and you'll organize them in your little uh, vertical jigging box and go with it from there. You will have your assist hooks already attached to your leader, which means as you go throughout the day, if something's working better than another one, you can just automatically take out the next jig, remove that jig from the solid ring of your assist hooks and spool back on the other one with the split ring and you'll be good to go for the next jig to give it a shot, see if you can get into the bike. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into rigging it up. I'm gonna go step by step of how to fasten your leader to your mainline braid by threading it together, and then we're gonna attach our assist hooks to the end of our leader, and then I'm gonna show you how to use your split ring and work with the split ring in case you're having trouble to get it onto the solid ring of the assist hooks. And then you'll be ready to get out there and do some jigging. Okay, so to do this properly, you're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need your vertical jig with the split ring attached at the top. You're gonna need your assist hooks separated from the split ring with the solid or welded ring at the top. A pair of split ring pliers, a sharp knife, your 20 to 25 feet of monofilament leader, and your main line to your reel. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to attach our monofilament leader to our braid. We're going to attach our leader to our main line of braid with a knot called an Alberto knot. The Alberto knot's a great knot for jigging. It's streamlined. The constrictive factor of braid when threaded onto your leader helps it so that it will not break free and it can withstand great pressure. The first thing to do to tie an Alberto knot is you take your leader and you're going to make a good sized loop with some good tag in it. Pinch your loop. Then we are going to take the end of our braided main line and we are going to send it through the bottom over the top of our loop. Just like this. Now you want to pull out about six to eight inches of it maybe a little bit more, you're gonna need quite a bit of main line to tie a good Alberto knot. All right, so now that we have sent our main line of our braid through the bottom of our leader, we're going to wrap it behind and we're going to start wrapping it around both strands of the leader. We'll do this six times. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. We have six wraps around both lines of our leader. Now we are going to go back up towards the main part of the loop, wrapping in between 
almost making a crosshatch pattern in between the wraps that we just did. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this is where we are at. We have wrapped our braid down towards the business end and back up towards its main line self. Now what we will do is we are going to come over the top and back out the bottom. So we have both the main line entry coming through the bottom and the tag end exiting through the bottom of the main loop that we had made. Now the next thing to do is to just start cinching down. You'll want to get a good grip on both tag ends and start cinching it down and you can see the constrictive factor of the braid as it tightens on itself and forms the Alberto knot. And again, wrap it real tight. Don't cut yourself on the braid and you're going to want to cinch down more and pull it tight and there you go. And that's what you'll end up with is the Streamline Alberto Knot. It's a tiny knot. It acts like a Chinese finger trap. It will not let the monofilament go no matter how tight I pull on it. That's why it's a great knot. The tighter you pull this way against the knot, the tighter the knot gets. Okay, and now that we've got our Alberto Knot tied, the next thing we will do is we will trim up our tag of our monofilament as close as we can get it. And now we will trim up the tag end of our braid with our sharp knife. You want a sharp knife, that way you can get a nice smooth cut on the first try. And again, you want to cut it as close as you can. And there you have it. It's a very tiny knot, but it is strong as nails. All right, so the next thing to do is to locate the business end of your leader. We are now going to fasten on our assist hooks at the solid ring. We are going to do this with a basic clinch knot. So you feed your tag end through your solid ring. We're going to take it, pull out about three to four inches. We will wrap it around the mainline portion of the leader five times. One, two, three, four, and five. We will take our tag and we will send it back through the pinch point loop created at the solid ring right here. And now we will simply take it and give it one swift tug and pull it tight. And there you go. You're good to go. That's not coming undone. Trim off your tag a little bit. You're good to go. Clinch knots are super strong and very shock absorbent. That's why I choose this knot, especially for jigging. And the final step to this process is to take our jig of choice and we are going to fasten it to our assist hooks located at the bottom of our leader with the split ring. So what you'll do is you'll take your split ring pliers and you are going to open up the split ring. If you can't open up your split ring far enough to get it onto the ring, just twist it up against the ring and it will open the, the ring up wider. If you have a fat welded ring or solid ring, you will need to get the ring open wider. It can be a little difficult with the stuff that is supplied by the manufacturer sometimes. So you'll just have to learn how to twist your pliers and get that ring open a little bit further and get it to bite. Once you get it to bite, it is just like putting a key on a key ring. You twist it around until it snaps on. And there you go. You're now completely rigged up and ready to get out jigging. All right, folks, and there you have it in a nutshell, how to get set up and rigged up and get ready to go out and do some vertical jigging. You're gonna go out there, Hit a deep ledge, drop it all the way to the bottom, make ground contact, and then you're going to start reeling it up, winding it up. Remember, vertical jigging is a rhythm. You're not stopping, you're not 
pulling up, giving wide swooping pulls and reeling on the downfall, or loading the rod and pulling it up. You're constantly reeling and pumping. It's a rhythm, it's a dance. It's gonna take time to get used to it, and you're gonna need to build up your stamina to do it effectively, but you will have the time of your life when you get into the hookup. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. I hope you had fun, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned about how to rig up to get out and go and do high-speed vertical jigging. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.